Welcome to the second video on Windows 8 and Microsoft Surface. In the last video, we focused on the start page, some of the basic gestures, how to access a couple of the menus, and then also how to open and close applications. We also jumped into the Map app for a little while just to, to take a look at some of the features in there. In this video, I want to focus on the browser, in particular Internet Explorer, um, which is, is something you're going to use quite a bit on every computer, and especially, I think, on, on a tablet or a phone device. And so to start Internet Explorer, you just hit the Internet Explorer tile. And one thing you'll notice right away is that this looks a little bit different than previous versions of IE. And this one is actually IE 10, um, which was specifically built for Windows 8. And it doesn't show any tabs on the top. It doesn't even have the URL or the back and the forward button. And so this might be something that sort of throws you off a little bit and want to sort of go through how you can access all of that stuff. Um, I do like the, the one single page, though, because it gives you a large viewing region on the application. Um, so what if I do want to get to, to another site? Well, I use that context menu at the bottom. Just swipe your finger up, and you'll see there's the URL on the back of the forward button. So from here, I can go to yahoo.com, press Enter, and it will now bring up the Yahoo site. Um, one thing I automatically sort of see on this one is some of the fonts are a little bit small on, on the Yahoo site. Um, but you can use that stretch um, gesture that I talked about before to zoom in. Um, take a look around the page, and then you can zoom it back down if you want. Um, and again, you can access the context menu to bring it up, and then if you want to go back to MSN, just hit the back button, um, or you can use the forward button, whatever. You can see there's also a couple of other um, icons down there. There's a refresh, a pin, and a tool button. And so the refresh button does exactly what it does on, on a regular web page, and I'll get to the pin one in just a second. Um, so what about favorites, history, that kind of thing? How do you get to those? Um, well, the only way I've found so far is to actually highlight the URL and then frequency and favorites show up. And you can just scroll through to sort of see, see what's, what's there and what's available. Um, so you can see already I have a couple of favorites identified, Bing and Slate and Yahoo. Um, let's say I use YouTube a lot. Um, I can pull up that site. And if I want to add that one to my, to my favorites, um, all I do is I hit the, the pin button, hit add to favorites, and now if I go over there, you'll see y yeah, YouTube is now available. Um, something else you can do is you can actually also go and in the pin there, you can see that there's also an option to pin to start. And so I can pick there and it shows YouTube. Um, so let's say that I wanted to edit the title, though. You can change it to something else. I'm going to put a space between the, the, the U and the tube. And I can do pin to start. Now what that does is we go back to the start screen, scroll all the way over to the right, you'll notice that now YouTube is available there. And so I can click on the YouTube icon, and it will go directly to the, to the YouTube, YouTube site. Um, so I think the only thing now that um, might be missing is tabs. Um, are there tabs in this? There actually are. They're just not visible. And we sort of showed how you use um, the gesture from the right to switch between applications or to see the applications. Use the gesture from the bottom to get to the context menu. On IE, it's a gesture from the top to see the tabs. And so you can see here that I have, have one tab open. Um, if I want to open up a second tab, I can hit the, the plus button here. And it'll open up a new one. And let's say I want to go to MSN. Can bring that up, brings up the MSN page, and then if you go into the tab one here, you'll see that there's there's multiple tabs open there, and you can continue to do that. You can open up another one, and let's go to Yahoo this time from favorites. So you have all of them there. Now, this, this top menu doesn't exist in every single application. Um, it, does, it does exist for a number of them, though. You'll just have to play around and learn which ones. And through the videos, I'll try to show the ones I've discovered. Um, one thing to be careful of, though, is that swiping from the top and all the way to the bottom closes an app. You don't want to do that. You just want to do the small gesture to, to open it. Um, and so one thing you've probably noticed is we've talked, oh, before we move from here, if you want to close one of the tabs, you can see a little X there. You just hit the X and that will close it. So now I just have Yahoo and YouTube. I can close the YouTube one and just have the Yahoo one there um, up, in the, up in the tabs. 
Um, so we've talked about all the different menu options except for the one on the right. If I go over there, you'll see there is a menu there. And this one is actually showing what they call charms. Um, it also, this is one way where you can see the battery power, the time, all that kind of stuff. Also, how good your signal strength is on your wireless. Um, but the one I wanted to show you here is I didn't notice this at first, but even though all of the charms are pretty much the same on every screen you go to, they're actually customized for the application that's open. And so when I hit settings here, it's showing me the settings for Internet Explorer. So if you're looking for internet options, help about, all that kind of stuff, that's where you'll find it. All the icons at the bottom are pretty much standard on all of them, but these ones change. And so you, you can play around with that. And just to sort of show you a little bit. So if you're on the start page and you swipe across on this one, you'll see it looks the same here, um, but if you hit settings, you'll see it has a different list of options on, on this one. Same ones at the bottom, but different ones up at the top. Um, the last thing that I realized I, I missed on the, on the last one is I, sh I was showing you how you can, you can select an application by sort of dragging it just a little bit in the opposite direction of the way that the screen scrolls. Um, what you can do is you can actually do multi-select, and so you just repeat that action, and you can select a whole bunch of things at the same time. And then you can see the context menu still stays up, and that means you can perform actions on all of these at the same time. So I could unpin all of these from start, um, but I want to keep snipping tool on, so I could sort of just unselect them all, but you can also just, it's a toggle switch. So now snipping tool is not selected. Oh, launched it. Um, go back over here. So I want paint, YouTube, Windows Phone. If I accidentally do snipping tool, I can just unselect it, select it, whatever. And then once I have the ones I want, if I want to remove all of these, it's going to remove the three of them. I do unpin from start, and you can see all of them were unpinned at the same time. And so this multi-select action can be very useful in a number of places. So good one to, good one to know about. Um, and I think that ends what I'm going to be covering in, in this video. Um, stay tuned for some more things about how to customize the start screen. And as I promised, eventually I'll get over to showing how to do some of this stuff on the desktop when you don't have a, a touch screen, because that's something that's, that's pretty important if you're going to be running this on a desktop machine. Or even some of the things are convenient if you have the touch screen and the keyboard, like I, like I have on this one. So stay tuned.